Misty Doan and I'm super excited to come with you with a bonus tutorial for our birthday bash week. We're really excited to celebrate our birthdays here at Missouri Star. We are so grateful for all of you for giving us so many wonderful years in business and supporting us through all of our crazy ideas and projects. Thank you for being here and I hope you enjoy all the fun things that we are doing for birthday bash this year. So I'm, as you can probably see, I'm going to be teaching this great June Taylor Quilt As You Go sewing machine cover and caddy. And so you'll notice um, it all comes packaged and it's the June Taylor pre-printed batting that is made for Quilt As You Go. And so it's got all the instructions listed in there. And you can see this is just covering this little sewing machine. It keeps it from getting dusty and helps protect your machine when you're not working on it. So we're gonna make this and I've got the caddy down here that I'll show you a little bit later. But let's dive in on how we use this great June Taylor product. Move this out of the way and we can get started. So to begin, when you open up your batting, you're gonna have a piece for your caddy, and that's what this is here. And then you're gonna have a piece that is for the cover. And you can see here, I've already got that basted to my background fabric. As well as this pre-printed batting that you get, you're going to need eight two and a half inch strips or an eighth of a yard of eight different fabrics. You're also going to need a half yard of three fabrics and an additional half yard for your binding. It also gives you um, the size of your backing fabric that you need. All of that is included in this package and it lay lays it all out for you. So I've gone ahead and just used some light basting spray to baste this section of my batting to my backing fabric. So I've got that all ready to go. So now we can really just get started with our quilt as you go. So if you're not familiar with these June Taylor products, the first thing they ask you to do in the instructions is get your cutting out of the way from the get-go. So they number your pieces. And so all of these pieces through here are one through 17 and every single one of those measures two and a half by eight. So I have a stack of my two and a half by eight inch pieces. Then we go to piece 18 and 19, and those are right here on the outside, and those measure two and a quarter by 37 inches. So you can see I have those cut. Then we move on to 20 and 21, and those measure three and three quarters by 37 inches. You can see I've got two colors there. And then for the outside fabrics, this is where it's going to vary depending on the size of cover you need. So however big or small your machine is, they actually offer three sizes. So you can see here, the small size will finish at 16 by seven by 12 and a half. The medium will finish at 18 by eight by 12 and a half. And the large will finish at 20 by nine by 12 and a half. So just measure your machine and figure out what size you need. I've got this nice baby lock accomplished and so I'm making the large size to fit my machine. So just figure out which one works best for you. And then you'll notice on the batting itself, there's three different dashed lines and those lines correlate with whichever size you're choosing. So for me, because I'm making the large, my outside, outside pieces need to be seven inches by 37 inches. So I have those ready to go. But if you do the smaller medium, these last two pieces will be a little bit smaller, which hopefully makes sense. <laughs> okay, so let's just dive right into this. We're gonna pick a piece of our fabric and we're gonna place this on our number one spot. So you can see there, I'm just setting it on top. And now I'm gonna grab another piece that's gonna be piece two. And because we're doing quilt as you go, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna lay this directly on top of number one and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam straight down this side here. And then when we press it open, it will be quilted. It's part of the magic. So let's move some of this out of the way so we can get going. And then we'll take this to the machine. I like to kind of roll up the bulk so it's not in my way. 
and then we will just sew down this side. Now it does say that a walking foot is not required and I don't have any problem sewing through this without a walking foot, but if you find you're having trouble, it'd be a great time to use one. There we go. And so we've got that first one done. We slide this out and now we can just kind of finger press that back and you can see how it perfectly covers the number two on there. And so now we're just gonna keep adding. I'm gonna lay this here and we're gonna sew on this side to add number three. It's kind of like paint by numbers for quilting and you're just gonna follow the numbers as you go. So let's just follow along as I add a bunch of these strips and get us to the next point. Okay, so we are coming into the last piece of our middle section. So I'm just gonna again lay this on top here and sew with a quarter inch seam. and then that will roll back and cover the last section. So you can see the whole middle is now sewn on and you can see on the back, it's being quilted as we go along. So that is pretty awesome. All right, so now we're ready to add our two and a quarter inch and it says to um, have them be two and a quarter inch by 37 inches and those go on either side of that center section. So I've got this one here that we're just gonna lay along this side. And I just wanna make sure I'm going past um, the lines for where I am gonna end up trimming this up later. Make sure I've got plenty of room. And so I'm gonna add one to this side and this one to the opposite side. So let's take this over to the machine. You do kind of have to maneuver the, the bulk under your machine as you go, so just take your time with that. As you can see, it sews through really nice. a little bit of extra fabric here, so I'm just gonna trim that off with my scissors. I can just trim straight across there. So that will work just fine. And then we can roll this one back. Let's see how that's gonna look. So nice. And it's amazing how just giving this a good finger press gets everything to lay down really nice. And they do recommend waiting to press until you're all the way done because it can distort the batting. So I just like to use my fingers. And then we're gonna do the same thing, flip this around and add this one to the other side. So let's do that. Just want to make sure everything stays nice and straight. We don't have any rumples happening. If you feel anything like that, be sure to flip over and check the back of your quilt. Make sure you don't have anything bunching up under there. All right, and again, I can just trim off this little bit of excess, just like so. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish adding all the rest of my pieces and I'll meet you back here for trimming this up. Okay, as you can see, I've got all of the various pieces sewn on and now we are ready to trim this up 
and a Thimble R sewing machine cover. So there is one thing that I realized I forgot to mention to you. Um, remember when I was talking about the three different dashed lines? You can see them here really well. Those correlate to your size, remember? And before you add any of your pieces, you want to top stitch on whichever size you choose. And that gives you the outside edge that's going to show through on your backing. And that's how you're actually going to trim this up. So it's a really important step. And I'm sorry I missed it earlier, but hopefully you haven't already got this far and you can remember to do that before you add your strips. So now that you can see we've got everything on here, all of our pieces on, we can flip this over. This is a great time to um, go through and pin these pieces that are on the outside because you don't want them to flip up and run any risk of um, cutting a corner off or something when you're trimming it. That would be sad after all the work you've put in. So we're just gonna pin this in place so that these side pieces aren't gonna lift. And I'm giving myself plenty of room so I can still trim on the sides. We'll rotate this around here. Put in some pins. And it doesn't take many just to hold them in place. There we go. And one more on this end. There we go. All righty. Now I can flip it over. And you can see this outside stitch line. You can see how it's all quilted and pretty complete. All we have to do is trim it up and sew our side seams. So let's grab a ruler and our rotary cutter. And I'm just going to trim about an eighth of an inch on the outside of those lines that I stitched. So I'm just lining up my ruler and we're just going to trim that off. And I'm just going to follow that stitch line and trim all of this out. go. You don't want to cut through in those corners. If you have to go back in the corners with a scissor, you can. So now that I've trimmed this, this is one thing to be mindful of. My pin is on this piece that I've cut off. And so I'm actually going to put this back in here to hold this fabric in place again, because otherwise this corner could lift. And we just do not want that to happen. So I've pinned that again. And we're going to continue trimming. If you want a nice long ruler for these long sides, you can do that. But I think either way, it's not going to reach the whole distance. So I just like to use this little one, especially since I have that um, reference point of the stitch line to work from. as you go projects are so satisfying because they are complete when you get to this point. You've, you've done the, the work of the quilting as you're sewing all your pieces on, which is pretty magical. Oops, I'm going to use my scissors there. It's being difficult. Easy to fix that way. All right, and we're just going to keep rotating. I 
again coming back with those scissors to just make the rest of that cut. We're getting really close to having all of our sides done. one side left. You can see here there's a spot where my um, stitching got a little wonky. Maybe you can see that through the ruler or right there. And what I want to show you is I'm just going to use the start of my stitch line down here and where my ruler goes to and I'm not going to worry about what's in between. It'll all work out in the end. So I'm just going to find the best average in between the two. And then continue down this side. There we go. So there is our excess. We can now flip this over, pull our pins out. We are getting so close. All right, so now the next step is to fold this in half. You can see how great it's looking. We're going to fold this in half and we are going to sew down these two sides. And I like to use a little bit wider than a quarter inch here, um, especially since we've left that eighth of an inch overhang. So it's probably a, about a three eighths of an inch or so that I'm gonna do to enclose all of that. Just line up the top and bottom here. We can turn and do the other side. And now we're going to pinch these openings that we have here. You can see how I did that. So here's the side that we just sewed and it looks like a little L when it's like this folded in half, but we're going to take the corner of that and lay it nice and straight and we're going to stitch that same stitch width all the way across there, creating that box that will um, sit nicely around our machine. Making sure I'm staying all lined up. And the same thing on the other side. There we go. And so to finish off this bottom edge, you're just going to bind this like you would any quilt. You can see it here on this one that I made. It's just finished with a normal two and a half inch binding that goes all the way around the bottom. And so see when you turn this out, you've got your finished cover. And there is a handle that's included. If you would like to put a handle on top, you would just do that before you sew your side seams like I just did. I didn't feel like I really needed the handle. I can just plop this on top. Um, but the handle is included. And so for that, you've got this uh, little piece here and a four by 11 inch strip of fabric that you would need to add that. But you can see how great this, this turns out. And let's go ahead and put this on my machine. So you can see the caddy here is made much in the same way that the cover is. And it coordinates so nice because those supplies that are listed on the quilt as you go batting includes everything you need to make the cover and the caddy. It's really quick and easy and it's quilt as you go. So it's so nice to have that project 
done in a day. And it looks great in your sewing room with these really cute batiks that we've used. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.